Ladies and gentlemen, would you like to see a commentary channel lose credibility with a single click of a button? Here you go. It's not Morgan Adams. It's actually Christy. That's been silly. And I'm here with Manny MUA. Hi, guys. Who just did this amazing glam on me, which is like, I mean, this amazing. is out of this world. I can't do my makeup like this to save my <laughs> life. But I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you for having me. We're going to get into why he's here, the whole story behind it, more about me. And I'm so excited. Let's spill about Spilly. Yeah, let's spill about Spilly. Let's get into it. Hey. What is up for everybody? Yes, I return to your phone, your computer, your TV, your tablet, your laptop. I don't know what you're watching me on right now, but welcome back. It's me, it's Malcolm, and today. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't expect that I will be talking about this. I was kind of like perplexed by this weekend. This weekend was a lot. Um, I kind of wanted to film this for a couple days because I did kind of sound off on Twitter, but I definitely wanted to gather my thoughts because this whole spell sesh, face reveal, whatever you want to call it, I had some issues with it and I'm going to try to voice them in the most fair use critiquing way possible without coming off like I'm hating on the girl or whatever. Um, so please don't witch hunt or like like harass anybody I talk about in my video. Um, today we are talking about Spill Sesh and this face reveal that she did with Manny uh, MUA, unfortunately, and I have some issues with it. Um, some people have already made videos about it. Um, people in the comments have already sounded off their disappointment. So let's just kind of like really dive into this because I feel like there is more to it than just a video. I feel like this is disappointing, but it's not surprising. And also, I'm just gonna tell you right now, for me personally, I was subscribed to Spill Sesh. I have unsubscribed, obviously, since I found out she is friends with a uh, private protector in Manny MUA. So I'm not with that. I'm not. I'm not okay with that. That's just me personally. If you guys are a Spill Sesh fan and you, you can look past that, I'm not gonna like berate you about it, honestly. Um, it's not my place to really tell you who or who you can't be friends with, but I am allowed to say that I feel like it's a problem. So it started this weekend. Um, I've been subscribed to Spills Press for a long time and I saw the little trailer for the face reveal and it had like Morgan Adams. It had like, um, all these past YouTube videos speculating on who, uh, Spell Sash was, and I thought the trailer was great. And I was like, I was invested. I was like, okay, this is great. Let's let's find out who Spill Sash really is. And I knew it was a face reveal by the way it was, um, like the way it was brewing up. And I was like, okay, I'm a little excited. And then the excitement quickly died down for me when I noticed that Spell Sash did a face reveal with Manny MUA. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Let's really let's really talk about this um, get ready with me style video um, that Spell Chef did on her channel with Manny MUA because I have a little bit of issues with it, okay? And once again, not really trying to like spread hate or anything, but I do feel like I I can side I side eye this a little bit because it deserves a side eye. That's just my personal opinion, right? So the it's like a it's like a very much back and forth like friends keyword friends talking to each other and if anything this video just kind of shows that spill shesh is friends with influencers behind the scenes there is like legitimately no way that she's only friends with many anyway and she's not friends with other people okay and what's crazy is spill shesh has talked about many anyway in videos she's talked about like a bunch of beauty influencers in videos uh the team 10 which she apparently she went to a party before she got famous uh, and blew up kind of thing. Um, she lists she talks about influencer parties a lot in like the back end of the video. I think that's a little weird that one of your big flexes is that you went to all these influencer parties, especially like um, Tana Mojo's twenty first birthday party. I I don't know like it just feels very like mean girly when not saying that spill session is a mean girl. But it feels very like 
I want to be validated. I need to go to these parties kind of vibe. Um, again, my personal opinion. So I noticed that it's Manny, Manny MUA and immediately I was like, nope, I I can't do this. I, I cannot do this. I can't support that, right? So for those that are wondering why Manny MUA being in this video was such a big deal, for those that have been following, especially on this side of the commentary tracks for a while, you would know that Manny MUA uh, protects James Charles. He supports James Charles out loud. Um, he also supported Colleen Ballinger in the now deleted podcast with him and Laura Lee, where he was like, I feel bad for Colleen Ballinger and all this stuff, right? So you have someone in with you in a video as a drama commentary channel, right? Someone that has defended probably two of the most jarring figures in a while. So many anyway, defending both Colleen Ballinger and James Charles, and then turning around and being in a drama commentary collab video. I just think that's weird. That's kind of like my initial take of it. So when they get into the video, Manny MUA says something about how, you know, drama channels are cool and like he understands them and all this stuff, right? For a long time, I was like so bitter boots about them because I would always yeah. just get talked about all the time. And I feel like a lot of times people just think we weren't getting my vibes and it's so hard to like come across the way you want to sometimes. Really, like, I didn't mean it that way. And yeah, um, it wasn't until like I really did become close friends with uh, Here for the Tea mm -hmm. that I realized that like, you know, drama channels are people too, and yeah. they do care. And that like, if you try to talk to people and like, just try to understand, like, I give it more of a chance. And so I think that's kind of what started the trajectory of like, they're cool. Like, they're not out to get me, especially if they're coming from like a cool place. Like, I don't have to worry about them taking me in the wrong way or being perceived in the wrong way. Honestly, I'm super down to earth. Like, I don't want people to ever think that I'm coming across from a hard place. And like, yeah, have I gotten a drama? Absolutely. But I'm never like coming from a bad place. Yes. I swear. Well, ho like, hopefully. I, <laughs> I swear. Otherwise, I've never... we're both canceled. <laughs> And I'm just kind of sitting there and I was like, but wait, you struck, you, 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 you did a copy strike on a T spills channel. Like, what was that all about? And they just kind of laughed it off or whatever. And I kind of find it funny that many MOA is now talking about how like, oh, drama channels are cool. If you just talk to them, they're like, they're cool. I don't know if that's because him and Laura Lee have a drama commentary podcast YouTube channel or what have you, or it sounds like he's kissing uh, like the commentary channel's ass so they would like leave him alone, which we're not gonna do, by the way. We're like, I have a story for you guys a little bit later about how I was almost used, but I'm not gonna say who, like who tried to use me because that situation is done and dead, but it has happened even to me someone with 8000 subscribers right i think that's crazy right so you have someone that protects both colleen ballinger and james charles and you're kiki he he laughing in the video i think that's a problem right i think that shows that you have a clear bias i think that shows that you don't care about the stuff you talk about, but you only care about the traction you get from it because there is a difference, right? And I'm probably gonna be going all over the place because I don't really have any notes, so I apologize. So let me just get this point out the way. So she kind of talks about how she had like five other channels and she was kind of like hoping one would like kind of pop off, which fair, a lot of people that do YouTube probably have made multiple channels trying to find something that sticks. I get it. Um, a lot of people have been there, um, but this is like, for me, this is my only channel. If anything, I've only changed the name and changed the style of it, but that's it. Um, but the way she was talking about how, you know, she wanted to get her foot in the door and she wanted to, like, she worked with Warner Brothers and she, and this is, this is where I kind of like, was like checked out, right? Um, in the video, she talks about how she worked for TMZ. Because it was Warner Brothers, I got like a Warner Brother email, so then I could apply to all the Warner Brother jobs. 
Oh. And then I landed at TMZ. I'm I told Manny this like, like a couple TMZ. days ago before we filmed this and I dropped this bomb on and him. And I said, it just all makes sense. Because it was a Warner Brothers company. So I feel like that's how I actually oh, ended yes, up getting definitely. an internship there. And I'm trying to be really, really nice here because I think personally, me personally, nobody else, you don't have to agree with this. I personally think that TMZ is one of the scummiest news outlets online right now. And let me tell you why. And a lot of people probably don't even know this story or probably don't remember this story because it happened a couple years ago. But this one instance made me realize that TMZ was one of the worst and most vile, we only care about the clicks, news sources ever, right? So when Kobe Bryant, and I'm trying not to get mad here because I, I get bad every time I think about it. So when Kobe Bryant passed away and when Kobe Bryant passed away, right? And a lot of people were like, who's Kobe Bryant? He was one of the Hall of Fame basketball stars, very young when he passed away in a helicopter accident with him and his daughter and um, seven other people. So TMZ leaked Kobe Bryant's passing, right? Which is like, okay, well, there are news sources that are supposed to do that. They want to get their permission out there to the people that might care about it. And I'm like, no, because TMZ was one of those news outlets that leaked Kobe Bryant's passing before his family found out. When I found out that nil tidbit of information, I was so disgusted, but also I looked at it and I was like, honestly, looking at their track record, I'm not really surprised. So screw TMZ for that. Secondly, TMZ was also one of those people that said Lil Tay, who I did a video on a couple uh, weeks ago, they said Lil Tay passed away and they got it wrong and they had to delete the article and everything, right? So flexing and like kiki hee -he -he about how you worked at TMZ for four years and being proud of working for that kind of organization, I have a problem with that. Again, just my personal opinion. You working at Team Z is like <laughs> fish breathing in water. Like it just flows, like it just makes sense. I started as an intern. I was 19 when I started. You're a baby. Yeah, I was a baby. You're literally a freaking baby. I basically was like, I'm not going back to school like all the other interns. Like mm -hmm. I really want to stay, I want a full-time job here. And by the end of that summer, I did get offered to have a full-time job there. And that you was so good. <laughs> was you were so freaking sick. <laughs> mm -hmm. That makes sense. But I wow. just remember any time that they would call me and want me to do something or come into the office, I was like, yeah, I'm there. Like, I'm, I can do this. Yeah. Because I really wanted that job. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted something full time. I wanted to be in the newsroom. I wanted that. The video is just kind of like a nothing burger. It's just kind of like, again, like two friends because they're friends. Just, I just want to keep reminding you that they're friends. Even though she's made videos about people in his friend group. Just, I just want to point that out. But anyway, so she says that before, like she really blew up and like really got into YouTube, she was in LA and she went all to all these influencer parties. And I think she named team 10. A lot of my friends would come and visit me though. Cause they're like, oh, Chrissy's in LA. Okay. In LA, really? And we would go to the influencer parties. Had an influencer the fact that you party went to the influencer era. Parties. We would go to the parties at the Team 10 house, which what? are like embarrassing. They were just crazy. Oh, okay. I okay. remember he me. had a really big party. I think this one was in the news. And then she named that she went to uh, Tana Mojo's birthday party. And if the TMZ thing didn't like upset me, it just seems like Spill Sesh, which I know that she's like a nice girl, whatever. But I really feel like just because someone's nice doesn't mean they can't do something wrong, right? So her kind of like being so excited that she went to all these influencer parties and all this stuff, right? It's just kind of like giving me the impression of 
that she likes the status of being popular or whatever, right? And so when I came to LA, we would go to parties. They'd be like, come to this party. Mm -hmm. Okay, You're sure. Like, sure, I guess. Oh, okay, guys, so this is pre- Yeah. Spilly. But, yeah, we had gone to the Team 10 house and I went to Tana's 21st birthday. I got a tattoo at that yeah. party. She had like a show at that time. Uh -huh. And I think I remember like watching that episode back and I was like, what was I even doing there? Remember, her and Manny MUA are friends. So I kind of find it hard to believe, and this is where the credibility comes into play, I kind of find it hard that you are fairly making videos about Manny MUA and his friends. Because like I said, I feel like she's just not friends with Manny MUA. I feel like she's friends with a lot more people in that space. Um, I'm not gonna speculate who, but that is just a gut feeling. Again, these are my personal opinions. If you disagree, I'm not going to like berate you about it. Again, my personal opinion. Okay, so I kind of watched other video reactions to this face reveal and the only ones I've really seen so far are Adam McIntyre, um, Dustin Daly and Peter Mon. And from what Peter Mon has like said in his video, apparently, allegedly, um, Spell Shesh kind of like mouse off about many Emmy way behind his back. Um, again, can't really confirm that, but it just kind of sounds, again, like if you ever watch the movie Mean Girls, it's kind of following the same kind of outline where all these people are involved in one group, but secretly behind each other's backs, they got something to say. So that's kind of like the vibe it kind of gives off. So like when she's key, he, 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 and in the video with him, I'm just kind of side eyeing that like, hmm. Are you really chummy with him off the camera like this? Mm. But anyway, I guess this is a kind of a rant video. We made it kind of like, I'm already at the 15 minute mark. I didn't even realize I rambled on that long, but that's pretty much the whole video where they're kind of talking back and forth. And she talks about how she wants to be like a 60 minutes, like investigative journalist and all this stuff but you have Manny anyway in front of you and you don't ask him once about why he deleted that podcast where he supported Colleen Ballinger or why he still openly supports James Charles who self-admitted that he was sorry to the victims. I think, I think there and then, like the whole kee hee hee hee, like if you don't know all the all the background stuff you would think this is a great video you would think oh my god spill sesh i've watched her all the time she looks gorgeous it's manny in way and if you have not paid attention to all the stuff behind the scenes then you would think this is a great video but as someone that knows that manny in way has defended james charles and loves promoting the the, the predator paints whatever you want to call it i don't even know what it's called painted Painted, yeah. Um, one of the forerunner, forefront members that support the painted um, brand by James Charles, and who, who's probably gonna do a maker review on the newest palette, the nude palette that James Charles is gonna release and stuff. So you have someone in front of you that I know that so many commentary channels would love to interview Manny anyway and really ask him the hard hitting questions like a real journalist would. Like this was a golden opportunity to really be like, okay, so hey Manny, you deleted that podcast with Colleen Ballinger. What was that about? Didn't ask that once. I am so sure that she already knows because again, she, from what I could tell, and now I'm looking back, taking a back step and looking at her channel and seeing that she is friends with Manny MUA. And for me, that ruins all your credibility. I'm sorry, a personal opinion. So now I'm looking at all these topics that she covers on her channel, and I'm kind of wondering if she looks at the most popular thing to talk about to get the clicks versus she actually cares about what she's talking about. Now let's really like really think about that for a second. I know that sounds kind of like it doesn't make sense, but let's really think about it. If you 
like for me, I'll use me as an example. So I'm not calling anybody out or tr like seeming like I'm calling anybody out. Let's say my creep show art videos, right? Um, all three of them, they all hit the algorithm, but they did really good in views, right? When I made those videos, I wasn't expecting it to like get tens of thousands of views. I legitimately cared about what I was talking about, right? And I even said like, hey guys, like back in the day when I posted those videos, I told them, I told people that watched my channel, I was like, look, um, I know I'm gonna be late to this like subject, but I kind of want to look into it. I want to make sure I get things right, all that good stuff, right? And that's just me. That's just how I approach a lot of videos that I make where um, if it's something I can talk about in one take, I'll do it. But if it's something that requires a little bit more nuance and looking into it, I also do that. So when you're releasing videos almost every day and they're short form videos, which I get that, um, but seeing how you're so he 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 with someone that is seen as problematic that you've made videos about his friends did you even mean anything you said in those videos because honestly to me you don't mean anything you say in those videos and again that is my personal opinion and looking at the youtube comments like if you go to the newest comments because it felt like at first people were just kind of letting this go and be like, oh my God, this is a great video. But then 24 hours passes, people found out like what the video was about and who was in it. Then the real comments, in my opinion, started showing up. So just even looking, I even pulled like the first four comments from the newest section where it was kind of like, this is kind of a weird and bad way of introducing your face and identity to the world. Um, Manny supports Colleen, James, and God knows who else. This is such a low blow and you've let down um, a lot of people down because this goes goes against everything you stand for, which again, to me, this kind of shows that you don't stand for anything and you'll just go for what the clicks go for, you know? It's like, to say I'm disappointed is an understatement or what's to say right here? I, I don't even know, I don't even know. Like, it really doesn't matter, but like you can see the comments right here where they're showing their disappointment after they're finding out a couple days later um what this like what this video was you know and that's kind of like how the video went i i would i kind of didn't want to watch this because i just heard that she worked for teams and like like that was like one of like her high points and i was just kind of like mm, i don't know I don't know. I don't think TMZ is the flex you think it is. I think being proud of that, I don't know. Again, my personal opinion, I think TMZ is a very scummy company. My personal opinion. So I think about this payroll narrative that was pushed around back in the day. And like, you know, uh, Peter Mon got a lot of flack for it. Uh, Dustin Daly, The Viewer's Voice, Paige Christie. You know, all these people that, you know, I've kind of watched and I kind of watched it happen in real time where, you know, people were like, oh, you're not talking about Trisha because, you know, you're on her payroll and she pays your bills. Like I saw all those kind of comments. Right. So I'm kind of curious where that energy is now, because I feel like having someone problematic as a face with a as as a face reveal video, like collabing with you. I think that's way worse than getting a PR package or a little shout out on like Twitter. Like you had to communicate with this person behind the scenes and be like, I want you to do this video with me and all this stuff. And Spill Sesh reads comments. She she even like, like I, I don't have the screenshot of it, but like there was a comment before I recorded two hours ago where they were praising her for like, oh my God, like this was so brave of you. and around that comment was like a bunch of negative comments about like, oh girl, this ain't it. Why many MUA? So she sees the comments calling her out for collabing with someone problematic. So if she's not gonna address that, again, that tells me that she only cared about the click and never the message that she was sending out. And to me, 
and this is my kind of like my final conclusion before I move on to my personal experience with this kind of stuff. To me, Spill Sesh is just another influencer. Sorry if that comes off kind of rude and like that's a negative connotation, but to me, it just seems like Spill Sesh was just someone that wanted to be an influencer. She got what she wanted and now she's gonna like be her authentic self. Just my personal opinion. Um, I know I'm gonna upset a lot of people by saying that, but again, that's just how I felt about this. Um, so let's 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 talk about this for a second. Um, so I'm not gonna say who or what the situation was, but as someone that has been friendly with like certain creators, I have. I, but I caught it, but I caught it, right? I have been fed information and stuff about people to make videos on that I never made videos on. And the reason why, and I will always stand by this moral high ground, is like my number one rule, even if it makes me look good, it makes someone else look good, it helps my point, whatever, right? I will never ever leak DMs that I receive, um, in videos that is just, or text messages. That is just like my number one policy. I don't care if the information is good and it makes for good content for a video. I just personally, for me, I can't do it. And I don't tell anybody that rule. I don't really talk about that rule. So there was a situation and I cover a lot of people. So, you know, what have you. There was a situation where I covered this like topic and, you know, I got a lot of support for it, but then, you know, the people involved started, you know, started like doing a lot of things behind the scenes that a lot of people didn't like. And I, I kind of caught on to what was going on. So I stepped back. I, I said something about it online and I quickly realized that the people that, you know, I was, you know, I was doing this video content for, it was like a couple of videos, I guess. Um, I noticed that when I stopped using information that I was given, I was soft blocked. And I don't talk about this situation. I haven't really talked about this situation except to like some close friends, but there was a situation where I got soft blocked by um, some people where they were all about me. They loved my videos. They loved the message I sent. But as soon as I didn't like make a video with the information that they gave me, all of a sudden I was not important enough to talk to. And I, I knew they were trying to use me and, you know, I should have recognized it sooner, but I am so glad I didn't like go through with anything they tried to have me do, you know? <laughs> so uh, I could go into detail about that story a little bit more but I can see that this is the beginning of something that may or may not blow up in Spell Sesh's face. And I don't know the girl, she doesn't know me, she's probably never seen my channel a day in my life and she probably still never will after I post this video. But as someone that was a supporter, I am voicing my displeasure and show, like showcasing my disappointment and I feel like since this payroll narrative got pushed so hard back in the day, I'm just kind of wondering where the same energy is today. Again, you know, I have no, I have no horse in the race. I just think, you know, you know, the people that got a lot of shit back in the day, you know, really shouldn't have gotten it, to be honest with you. Um, and again, I'm not trying to defend anybody. I'm just saying it's kind of weird that, you know, people are clapping and cheering for this when if, you know, I, you know, Peter Mott said in his video best, you know, um, if, you know, he popped up in a video with like, you know, Jeffree Star or, you know, Manny NUA, like the, he would get flamed for it and he would. So again, I'm, I, I do see that a lot of like Spill Sesh or ex Spill Sesh fans, you know, are kind of looking at this and going, you know, hey girl, this ain't it. I got to unsubscribe because you're supporting like predator protectors and that's not what we do here, which 
I'm kind of glad that a lot of people seem to be picking up on that energy. Now, there was a there was a story that Peter Mon and both Dustin Daly have both kind of corroborated, and the the stories match up. Where um, here for the T, who's also known as Sam, um, was friends with Manny Emiwe, or like they were friendly. And Manny Emiwe didn't invite her to this party because here for the T made a video. Um, and I guess the people that were in charge of the party didn't like that, so he didn't invite her, even though they were friends. So it just feels like Manny Emiwe is leeching on to like the up and coming, like the next up and coming like commentary channel to like give himself a shield. And if anything, he just kind of knocked like a high, high, like, like a highly uh, respected channel out of the, how do you say it? Like, yes, the credibility for me for Spell Sash is gone, but now Manny anyway has like this up and coming, even though she's not up and coming, she's been doing this for years. Um, he has this up and coming, almost hitting a million subscriber uh, YouTube channel that does commentary videos. And who knows? Maybe he, maybe it was a quid pro quo kind of thing, which I feel like it was where, you know, she, he did this video, but now it's like, oh, well, can you not make videos about me or James or like any of our friends for like a month? And maybe that was the deal because I did notice that, you know, she does a lot of dance mom videos and, you know, pop culture videos. So I'm going to call it right now. And this is my personal prediction. She's going to stop talking about YouTubers and now she's going to trans transition into only pop culture things. That way she can still be friends with said influencers. This video was reached 30 minutes long and that was kind of like a whole rant. I apologize, but I feel like I said everything I needed to say. And yeah, that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it at today. Once again, it is Malcolm. That's me. Um, I hope you had a great weekend. Um, happy Monday. It is getting darker outside because it's like five o'clock, but it's already dark outside. So without further ado, I wish you all well. Happy holidays. I wish you good health. And I will see you again next time.